we were discussing that uh, Alzheimer is not just a disease uh, that is touching the personal brain, but uh, that is affecting a whole family. The people that have the most stress and the strains mm -hmm. are the people that take care of mm -hmm. the person. I think I forgot, I forgot, and I forgot. Ah, it's stress, it's depression, it's we, we don't know what, let's give her antidepressants. And when you have the gene, there's a 50-50 chance yes. that you're going to get it or you're or going not to not. Actually, she decided the 50% chance to have it. Yes, absolutely. Basically, almost 10 years of... of convincing uh, the others convincing. to be a little more open, to learn new things and new techniques. Exactly. The genetic form is actually a very minor form of Alzheimer's. Learning every day and keeping your mind active is the most, e even more so than physical part mm -hmm. of things because your mind actually controls your body. You actually have a chance to make a better life for you and by for connecting your thoughts and the rest of, of, of you because it's not only going to make a better life for you, it's going to make a better life for your children and your grandchildren and so on. Human mind in human heart, individually can do things, but combined... They can do miracles. Addiction and depression and mental are causing more illnesses than any of the environmental factors. My generation actually screwed up the world. Sorry about that. Okay. I agree with you, actually. <laughs> Bună ziua, doamnelor și domnilor! Bine ați revenit la o nouă ediție a emisiunii Eu Pot, singura emisiune de dezvoltare relațională din România. Eu nu i-aș spune coincidență, i-aș spune sincronicitate și o să vedeți imediat de ce. Astăzi, alături de mine, îl am pe domnul Filip Cioban. Uh, hello and welcome! Thank you very much. A pleasure to be here. And I'm very happy that you are here with me today because, uh, as I was saying, I wouldn't call it a um, coincidence, I would call it a uh, synchronicity because the moment we have met and the moment we have uh, decided when to shoot this uh, interview, we didn't realize that uh, actually today is the um, International uh, Day of Fight Against Alzheimer's Disease. Yes. So it is a very nice synchronicity. Um, why I wasn't presenting you l otherwise than uh, uh, a specialist in Alzheimer's syndrome is that you have been uh, through a um, very important personal experience uh, with this disease and uh, I will ask you further about this one. But you didn't have only a personal experience. After that, you have transformed it into a business and into an educational system and you are teaching both Romanians and uh, American people how to take care of the relationship between themselves and themselves, between their brain and their heart. Can you please tell me about your experience with Alzheimer's disease? Okay, let me f first say again, I, th I, th I thank you for the invite and it I don't call it a coincidence that it's the 21st, it's more fate mm -hmm. that it ha ha happened because both you and I ac actually forgot that this day is one of the most important days in the um, Alzheimer's fight mm -hmm. going on. So again, um, the world works in strange ways. Okay. But beautiful ways. Yes, exactly. All right. Uh, first thing I do want to say, I am Romanian, but Okay, of all regions. I'm born in the States, mm -hmm. okay. My grandparents immigrated here in 1898. Ah, cool. Okay, immigrated from here to the States. So I'm, uh, I'm second generation born in, in the States. So I learned the language and everything, but still it's easier for me in, in English, English yeah. of course, everything, okay. And uh, I, ca I came back in uh, 1990, mm -hmm. right after the revolution occurred all right and I stayed from ni 1990 through 1997 when I met a girl in Cluj uh, married her took her back to the States and gee it, w it wasn't a huge surprise that when I said we, we have to go back to Romania or I'd like to go back to Romania she said you can go I'll stay <laughs> ah, cool. <laughs> okay so what right. happened she liked she liked the States okay so I was flying back and forth from 
States, okay, so Romania. Okay, so the American husband was living in R Romania while the Romanian wife was living in the United exactly. States. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting deal, yeah. Interesting deal, yeah. Okay. Uh, she studied to be a nurse. Uh, she was a nurse at the uh, Cleveland Clinic, which mm -hmm. is by number number two worldwide now, hospital-wise. Okay, she studied hard. Uh, she had a great great job. But when she was 44 years old in 2004, she started coming home at night, and she said, "I think I forgot to do this. I think I forgot to give an injection. I think I forgot. I forgot, and I forgot." So we thought it was stress or strain of mm -hmm. the job, everything. And uh, she began to forget more and more and more, everything. In the meantime, I have to add, her sister, who was one year older in the States, was actually diagnosed with Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's mm -hmm. also, after she was hit by a car and head uh -huh. injury. Okay, and then she began to forget too. So it was quite a shock for my wife too to see her, her, her sister, sister yeah, diagnosed with this. So during this time, she she was she was forgetting, and we went to neurologist after neurologist, doctor after doctor in the states. The same thing too, and everything. Ah, it's stress, it's depression, it's we we don't know what. Let's give her antidepressants, everything. Hey, you have to remember, this was 2004. This is a lot of years back before this disease was relatively known, everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of my neurologist friends who I was close with said, look, we don't understand this. Let's do a genetic test just for the heck of it. We don't, we don't feel anything's wrong or anything, but let's do a genetic test. We did a genetic test. It turns out that she had the gene. Mm -hmm. And when you have the gene, there's a 50-50 chance yes. that you're going to get it or you're or going not to not. And probably what triggered it off in her regards was the fact that her sister was, di was diagnosed. And that triggered a reaction in her, ma her mind too, a, a, a super stressful reaction. Have you ever thought that she had a mimetic behavior? that once she has found out um, that she has the genes and she had the vivid example of her sister that uh, had the genes uh, activated, do you think out of loving duty and belonging to the family, her psyche said, okay, I will be part of this too? Yes, absolutely. Since she was in the... Uh... So actually she decided the 50% chance to have it. It's a possibility, yes. At the yes. subconscious it, level, of it's course. It's a very strong chance because mm -hmm. when she found out her sister was, was ill, she had the reaction that most likely triggered it. We mm -hmm. do, nobody can know for sure what triggers that gene, okay? But in her sister's case, accident occurred. Yeah, big injuries, big Th that head triggered brain the injuries. Gene. Yeah, that triggered the gene there in her and then when my wife found found out also we and we we kind of figured that's what triggered the gene also so by 2006 she didn't know who i was anymore she she had to quit working she we they had to let her go from her job from and 2006 she didn't know who i was anymore english skills were lost even romanian skills were losing oh, back wow. then also so that's when my entrepreneur type of life, which is a little goofy life, a, l a little crazy, but it has its benefits too. I was able, able to pick up and actually bring her back to Cluj uh -huh. and take care of her full time until uh, 2015. But so that was a very important school for you. For 10 years, you were the um, personal take care of your wife who had Alzheimer's yes. disease. Yes. I'm very interested to find out how you became a specialist in Alzheimer's disease. Because, okay, you had the personal uh, example, but um, you didn't fall into the sadness part of this experience. You turned it into a, a skill that could provide knowledge 
for the whole society, and I find it very, very important. This. We have a saying in the States, okay, n number one, we have a saying that you can't talk the talk unless you've walked the walk, exactly. okay? So I didn't want to be the type of person that said, I know what to do in this disease, I know the route I have to take because I was a neophyte, I knew nothing about it. In 2004, when she, she was diagnosed, I knew absolutely nothing about it. I heard about it. Nobody in my family had it. None of my direct friends had it. So it was something new to me. So I took it upon myself to learn as much as I could. Mm -hmm. uh, I became a part of the uh, Alzheimer's Association in the States, and I actually was elected to the board also there, mm -hmm. which was pretty cool Important, but yeah. one of my friends in the states um, his name is John okay he has a company called healthcare interactive mm -hmm. and he has a whole video course library on educating non-professional family and professional caregivers on the disease from start to finish so I went through the course 120 hours of coursework okay enough and I took the certification exams and mm -hmm. the certification exams were you have to have 90 plus percent oh, wow, in yeah. order to pass so you really have everything to study. okay so you have to study you have have to learn so I studied during this time I took those exams I passed mm -hmm. them did well and then during the time that we were back here that's the time I thought, what do people do here? How do people learn? And that's when we took on the translation portions of the, mm -hmm. of the videos and And you started so to, to train also Romanians on this disease and how to be the Alzheimer's team, actually. Yes. Because we were discussing that uh, Alzheimer is not just a disease uh, that is touching the personal brain, but uh, that is affecting a whole family. So we are talking not about a patient, but about a, a whole team. Exactly. The, pay, the, 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 the afflicted person, all right, most of the time doesn't understand what's So actually what I understand out of this disease is that the patient is the happiest I don't know, in, in a very innocent and exactly. uh, in a very innocent way, but exactly. the patient is the happiest. The relationship actually that uh, is really confusing is for the beloved ones. Exactly. The people that have the most stress and the strains mm -hmm. are the people that take care of mm -hmm. the person. All right. When, when I moved her back here, one, one, of the things, one of the things that affected the whole 10 years was, and, and I hate, it, it's not only true in Romania, it happens worldwide, all right, is people know better. Ah, yeah. Right? People know better. And I don't know how many disagreements we got, we got into about how to take care of, of Carmen. I rather mm -hmm. use mm -hmm. her name now, Perfect. everything, okay. How to take care of her in the best way that, that I was trained and shown and everything. And even when I showed the videotapes here, everything, they said, no, we know, still, taught. We, 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 un we understand this, but we think she should be taken care of like this or uh -huh. like this and everything. So it was basically almost 10 years of, of convincing uh, the others convincing. to be a little more open to learn new things and new techniques. Exactly. Okay. Um, can you please tell me how important is how we are taking care of our lives considering that Alzheimer's disease, okay, is half is genetic, but the other half, most of the times we're not paying attention at the full side of the, of the glass, but the other half is in our hands. So as Dr. Joe Dispenza is saying, which is a very important pioneer of um, neuroscience yes. in the United States, and he became famous worldwide, worldwide of course. Worldwide, yes. He was saying like this, <coughs> if we are learning something new, every single day if we are taking care of our thoughts and our, of our feelings and if we are uh, taking care of our food this 50 percent 
can became uh, can become a little heavier than uh, the other one uh, then and somehow the epigenetic environment can beat the genetic tendency exactly yes look the genetic form is actually a very minor form of Alzheimer's and dementias okay D dementias are split actually there's five types of dementia there's Alzheimer's disease which yes. is the most prevalent and the most known then you have frontal temporal yeah okay which, which is a very cruel type of dementia because you not only lose your thoughts but you become very very aggressive and everything too and it's very difficult for the families it's very in painful that part. Also. okay then there's a vascular form of dementia the vascular form are for the people who, who um, <coughs> excuse me who who have had strokes okay. okay people who have strokes are very inclined to go through vascular dementia that's what my partner Corina right now that's what her father has mm -hmm. at this point in time too and by the way she's another certified dementia specialist okay. she took the course also okay? okay so we're one of two in Eastern Europe okay okay very interesting we will come and back that, to this so point we'll, we'll and come back we are to that. missing uh, uh, other two types then okay so what what I've named is Alzheimer's frontal temporal vascular yes. vascular Lewy bodies is a particular type that you hallucinate mm -hmm. with and then there's what's called the mixed where the th they they can combine mm -hmm. okay they're all bad there's no cures okay. anything so. uh, the idea of this interview is not um, we, we don't have a medical purpose and we don't have um, the purpose to make people be scared of it but what we are trying to do is make people conscious that exactly. the power is within themselves and they have the power so uh, all of us have the power to uh, overcome our body condition and our genes. In the past, they didn't want to take the time to educate themselves. Learning every day, and what you just said about the other professor, okay, mm -hmm. her learning every day and keeping your mind active is the most, e even more so than physical part mm -hmm. of things, because your mind actually controls your body. Your mind controls all your functions. Mind controls your blood pressure, your heart rate. Every, everything starts in your in brain. I, I don't know I, I, a, a little bit of because I'm not a doctor, okay? Yeah, but this but is not a medical I'm, purpose. I'm, so I'm not a doctor, okay. but you know the membranes of the heart are directly and electrically tied with your brain, all right? So your heart brain is a true, very true, mm -hmm. very, very true. So to keep your mind active, it's just like the rest of you. If you don't exercise, what happens to your body? It thickens, becomes bigger and has more weight around exactly. it. Exactly. And again, you get lethargic, you get, you get to move less, you get uh, every, look, learning, reading, computer, games, crossword mm -hmm. pu puzzles, keeping active keeps that other form I'll call of Alzheimer's mm -hmm. which comes with age mm -hmm. let's say that you can push that off you can oh. push it very far away you can put look give an example one 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 of the uh, uh, you I'm a finance guy and and health care guy as you know yes okay everything um, Warren Buffett yeah 92 still runs his company okay why because he keeps his mind active the gentleman that started the Alzheimer's Association in the States came into the office every day until he was 105 years old and this is only mind training okay how important is the age as, uh, as a number and what is the impact of what we think about our own age? Age is a number. That's it. It's how active you want to be and how you want to get yourself involved in life. My generation actually screwed up the world. Sorry about that. 
Okay. I agree with you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will not contradict okay. you. My generation screwed up the world. Yep. Okay. It's just look around you. Okay. Yeah, but in People the end, now it's starting to come together. I'm seeing in in the Alzheimer's portion and uh, dementia proportion, mm -hmm. I'm seeing people that want to learn more, they're open to more, they want families that um, are, are, are interested in doing things. From your experience, how uh, interested are people into knowing how to have a better life, how to make the heart-brain coherence? Ah, that's, come. That's, that's, that's a question that I've been pondering for a long time, okay? But how I see this as, I see this as a generational mm -hmm. thing going on, okay? As, as I said before, I see people more your age and younger more interested in this aspect of life. How do I connect the mind with the rest of, of me? More people are practicing mindfulness now than in the, in the, the past. past. The older generation, and, and if I can regular, if, if I can just concentrate here right mm -hmm. now, Romania, okay, the old, older people, especially my age group, or 45 and above, let, let's say, that, that experience the previous system systems and, and everything system. and education mm -hmm. everything it's 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 more difficult for them to actually grasp more difficult this. but not impossible not impossible and i see more opening up in this but again it takes a constant system that's going to how do i put this that puts it in their face constantly uh -huh. and says you have a chance to actually change things. You actually have a chance to make a better life for you and by connecting your thoughts and the rest of, of, of you, because it's not only gonna make a better life for you, it's gonna make a better life for your children and your grandchildren and so on. For the, to stop somehow the, the passing of the transgenerational wounds, Ex if we are going there. Ex exactly, and you know, these thoughts of these thoughts of the older generations are going to, it, it, they're going to die out in time too. Of mm -hmm. course, they're going to so die the out. The system of years and the system of limitative beliefs. Exactly. We are talking about this. Exactly. Okay, um, and let's explain a little bit what heart and brain coherence means, actually. It means to think and to feel and to do the same thing. Because uh, as Dr. Joe Dispenza was saying, some mental disorders, I'm not only talking about Alzheimer's, but let's just start with depression and with anxiety. Um, they are start, starting from here because you are thinking that you should do something, but your believing system is not allowing you to express it, so to say it. And uh, in the end, you will do a third thing somehow. And this is how you are splitting your personality into multiple versions of yourself. And this is how um, mental illnesses are being installed. Yes, yes. There's you, um, what was brought up in the past a little bit is what you believe in mm -hmm. and what you will. What are the actual differences in that? Okay, your belief system is what you acknowledge, which you say, yes, this exists. Like, for instance, if you're religious, mm -hmm. you believe in God. So you're accepting that. So belief is acceptance, and acceptance is actually belief. It's the same, same, same thing, okay? But you may have to will yourself to actually believe. So you may have to force your mind and your heart to connect, to actually force your, your, your energies and your willpower to actually turn that from will 
into something you accept and actually believe in. How would you do that? How would you transform your um, will of believing into real belief? Actually, I had that happen with Carmen a little bit, okay? When, when she was diagnosed, both her and I didn't want to accept this at all, all right? It wasn't until it began to sink in like, like, a, like a death mm -hmm. is the same way, okay? Until the person's actually gone and, and you're, you're going through the pro process, you may not accept it that they're gone, okay? So what we had to do is we had to say, look, we have to, we have to accept this. We have to believe, we have to have the belief that this is what's going on, all right? But in, in our inner hearts, we didn't want to accept this both of us so it took it just took a lot of mental exercise exercising and a lot of mental capacity to sit and think and try and get the brain to connect with the heart and accept and especially for me to accept that I was going to have to take care of somebody mental for the next who knows who how many knows years how many years actually to understand the new reality Exactly. And I, I can't tell you how many times that Carmen and I sat there and she would ask me, who will take care of me? And I said, I will. She goes, I don't want you to. She goes, you have a life. I said, no, you put up with me. <laughs> now, it's my, now it's my turn and everything. How important is love into such a disease? When into a partnership, something similar is happening. Is it a crossing point of checking on the quantity and of the quality of your love for the patient? I was asked this question a while back. I was in a conference here, actually, in, uh, in Bucharest, and they said, what, what's the difference between love and devotion? Yeah. Right? Love is something that has no boundaries. If you love somebody, you have to be opened in your heart and in your mind. You have to be open that, that there's no boundaries. No matter what occurs, you're going to be there for that, that per person. The devotion comes as a matter of, I hate to put it like, like this, the devotion came as a matter of a debt almost. Oh, wow. As I, as I said before, okay, she put up with me. And I'm not easy to put up with, okay? I'm entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I've done a, a lot of different things in my life, everything. I have crazy ideas. You, you I want to start this, I want to start this. Somehow. She put up with me, she supported me, she, she did the, these things. So my devotion was almost also a debt in return, mm -hmm. saying, you took care of me, you got me through the times that were, were, were difficult for me. Now it's my turn, okay? The love was also there at the same time saying, yes, I, I care about you and, I, and, and it's my duty and my and responsibility. And I'm handling this, we're handling this I have together. to take care of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and another question, and I'm still staying on this um, love aspect and on the love energy. Um, the energy of love can cure you. Love is a power that nobody understands completely. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you. Everybody's been in love, out of love. Everybody go, goes through through certain things in their life. Okay. Love is something that we can't explain. I've seen. I know. I I know of cancer pa patients, patients. Okay. That their families supported them so much and loved them that they were cured. Okay. Or mm -hmm. they they were. All right. My oldest brother is an example of that okay he's passed away now everything for but other causes from for other causes, causes. Okay. okay other causes he had cancer of the throat mm -hmm. 
never smoked, never drank, never. He was he was a good boy, not like me, okay, <laughs> at all. <laughs> okay. Okay. He was a good boy. He had can cancer of the throat. He couldn't eat. He had a feeding tube. His wife daily for over 12 months fed him and took care of him and everything. That was a, that 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 is something out of love. That because of the mental state also because he felt that he was loved and cared for and accepted and, the way he was and accepted the way he 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 was. He was actually cured. He was cancer free for I think 15 years before he passed mm -hmm. away. Okay, same thing. So this in, is. In, in Alzheimer's Sorry. disease, in the genetic form, and any of the, there's no, there's no known cures for yet. now. Let's for say now. for now, for because now. For now. epigenetics for now. and neuroscience are making discoveries oh, and huge steps. Oh, there is making huge, huge in steps in the last 15, 20 years. Actually, the world was. Um, amazed by the discoveries that uh, that were made so love can do miracles the same as the prayer and the same as the powerful belief into healing exactly yes very very true the hum human mind and human heart individually can do things but combined they can do miracles they can do miracles yes Okay, so the human body is a very po powerful machine oh. and the power is actually wi within us. Um, when did you discover that you had the power of keeping your mind active, of being the age you decide to be, and also giving back to the world, also teaching others these, let's call them secrets of life? Actually, my whole life. All right. I learned as a little kid, okay, my, my granddad, my paternal grandfather, mm -hmm. who was born here, okay, he was an entrepreneur and everything too. He always taught me from the time I was a little kid on everything, you can do what you set your mind to. You can do anything you want to, just believe in you. Don't care what anybody else says believe in you okay so yes I after living in Hong Kong and Indonesia and India and everything I had I've had I've had I've had a great life I have no regrets on it okay well maybe a few <laughs> okay but okay for the most part no okay um, what made me realize that I can do more with what I'm given, and we're all given talents, every one of us. We may not realize them until only God later knows in when. Life or later maybe in never. life, or maybe never. Okay, we're all given particular things that we're good at. Okay, after going through the 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 time that I went through with Carmen, it made me realize that. More, there's more to the world than going out and starting a business and being an entrepreneur and mentoring maybe and doing things. There's more that I can actually do good with. The, or, there's or, more than the rea immediate reality, the, than the uh, tactile reality, the 3D world. So somehow this um, happening in your life and this experience you had with Carmen, made you understand that there is more than this than the to to be more focused on the spiritual part of life yes and 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 even now okay i'm more focused in my particular life at this point in time and god look i can i can walk out of here and drop dead now too who knows okay we, we don't actually we it, all can we that. all we we all don't know when mm -hmm. okay i don't i don't let that bother me at all. What bothers me is that I have so much that I want to do yet and so much that I want to accomplish and so much that I can teach. Uh, if I can, but my students and, and I, te I teach a dementia course for um, doctors actually also, young, you know, younger doctors and everything teach. They said, ah, you have wisdom. I said, no, 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 no. I have experience. I can have all the experience in the world, but I can be the dumbest person around too. Exactly. <laughs> so you have wisdom because having a certain experience and turn it 
into a lesson, the second time a similar thing is happening to you, you're not going through a scratch again. You're, you're not saying, oh, this happened to me again. You're saying, oh, I know this and I also know the solution to this situation. Exactly. Because this is wisdom in the end. That's if you, le that's if you learn from your past. And if you live in the here and now, if you're living in the awareness, how did you learn to live in the awareness of what is happening to you? Surrounding myself with, and, and, and I, I, I tell anybody, if you can surround yourself with people younger than and you, that are energetic and think like, and think openly, you absorb more from that than you do from sitting in front of the television, watching the news, or do, doing any of that. Does the environment have anything to do with uh, mental illnesses? I mean, the addictions like alcohol, uh, cigarettes, and uh, all kind of uh, abuses, uh, even food and lack of movement, from your experience, because we can make somehow a statistic because you have a huge experience yes. in the field. I'm a 60s kid, so yes, I can, I can talk about all these things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, for sure, everything. All of those have an impact. Alcohol, drugs, depression, addiction. Nowadays, all right, what, what, what we're seeing in, in, uh, in, our, in, our, in our telehealth end, of things, okay, mm -hmm. or in our healthcare things, or, and end of things. Addiction and depression and mental are causing more illnesses than any of the environmental factors around. It's the pandemic that hit that everybody began to sit at home, get less active, get less interested in going out and doing things. And be things. more introspective. Maybe this is the scary part. When you meet yourself, your true self. Oh. When you're putting yourself I into the I still don't want to meet my true self. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Okay. I don't, um, maybe my true self will scare me. Okay. I've been, but I think, I think I have met my true self now everything mm -hmm. okay I don't know that but what we're seeing what we're seeing is people your generation younger especially people that are sitting in chairs all day or IT people people that are sitting and using their minds all Very day and not for a said they they are going through such depression bouts and addiction bouts right now because they are thing. disconnecting actually their physicality and their brain are totally disconnected exactly are, they are living into a virtual side of the world let's say exactly mm -hmm. which unfortunately it seems that the world is coming to more and more also and and i, yeah, I think but when you're saying the world is a very generic but if the trend is this one I, if i'm living in my consciousness and it, with my conscious self i can decide how much of this trend i i can go with that's very true but in reality what happens is this a, a, a lot of people get married they start to have kids they get responsibilities more and and they they think that the financial responsibility is the top of it all and is it's it not still and like it's this? not and it's not is it still like this yes the, the general mentality yes is this financial uh, priority is on the first if you if you have the responsibilities of a family yes it's still coming to be the first if you don't if your family's grown up if your kids are grown up or you are your your single or you're married with no kids or something like that that's a different story but I, I see this happen almost every day now even in our, our own groups and everything when this responsibility comes it becomes more I have to work I have to make I have to make money I have to live I have to provide a better life for my kids so actually everything is about now. survival not about living which Everything, is a huge yeah. difference. Do you work to live or live to work? Yeah, that's very important. And uh, unfortunately, our time for this interview is coming to an end. And I would like you to think of the worst advice 
you have ever received? The worst advice I ever received yes. was this, okay? The worst advice is what you're doing is stupid, uh -huh. you can't do it, or in limba roman, nu se poate, nu exista această traba, okay? Any of those type of advices to me in my life, when people tried to set me back and push me, me, me back, when I was younger, I took those into effect and they slowed me down. And I have, I, I have a lot of regrets on that now, too. The, so the worst advice I ever got was, that's stupid, you should get a red. <laughs> oh, I don't want, God rest her soul, okay? My mother was, <laughs> get a real job. Uh-huh. Get a, get a real job. You went through university, you have all this schooling and everything. You get a real job now and everything. I don't want a real job. I had a real job and I don't like it and everything. A, and dreamer, that, yeah, uh, a dreamer's yeah. job is to be a, a pioneer for the whole society, right? Yeah, and I was a dreamer. I wanted to do things and everything, whereas my father was extremely supportive in things. My granddad, both, okay, but my father, the same way. You want to do it, just go and do it. So okay? you were but, lucky, let's but say. I, I was side. lucky in that respect, okay. Okay, and the best advice that became somehow the motto of your life, which was it? Follow your heart. And what you're doing with your brain? You leave it behind? No, my brain's controlling my heart. Very interesting um, connection. Uh, both physical and uh, as, a, as a concept. And I want you to give an advice to everybody that uh, is watching us in this moment, how to get a healthier life, both, physic both physical and mental. On the physical side, do more. Go outside. Don't sit in front of the television. Don't sit in front of the computers. Don't let your kids sit in front of the computers all day. Everything, get outside, play with them, work with them, connect. teach them, connect with them, exactly. And on the mental side, read, learn, learn from your kids, because your kids are gonna teach you also. And love. Love is something that is it just it, it's it's something that is built in you already. You have to recognize it. You just have to discover love inside. Exactly. We all have lives to live. Live live your lives with open minds and open hearts. Because if you do that, you're gonna live the fullest life and and you're gonna achieve levels that you actually never thought you could before. Thank you very much. Ce înțeleg eu din toată povestea asta este că singura formă de sănătate mentală și fizică trece atât prin inimă cât și prin creier. Deci coerența dintre cele două este absolut fundamentală pentru a ne construi o nouă viață fix așa cum ne dorim. Și așa cum spunea invitatul meu de astăzi, trăiți-vă viața ca și cum ar fi a voastră. Până data viitoare, urmăriți-ne și pe Facebook, și pe Instagram, și pe YouTube. O să găsiți acolo peste 100 de interviuri foarte interesante și cu siguranță fiecare dintre ele va deschide o fereastră către o viață trăită mai simplu, mai ușor, mai frumos și mai bine.